The gentleman from Iowa is recognized. Thank you, Chairman Gowdy. Thank you to our panelists for being here today. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a career small business person. And a wise person once said uh, the following, and it has stuck with me ever since, the complex, the complex favors the large. And uh, someone mentioned it earlier in their testimony that regulations end up building moats around large businesses. In fact, over the last eight years, regulations have driven industry consolidation. Call me old-fashioned, but I think industry market forces should drive consolidation if there is any, not regulations. I looked the number up. Under President Obama's administration, we added 20,642 new regulations on the books. I mean, we're called regulation nation. And yet we want our businesses to compete globally and provide good paying jobs with good paying benefits. Of course we all want that. But we have a 600 pound sack of regulations on every business's back. Regulations have driven consolidation in the banking industry, Dodd-Frank, healthcare industry with the ACA Act, agriculture, I'm from Iowa. I don't know about you, but I don't think it's good for our country, it's not good for our citizens to have five companies controlling our financial sector, five companies controlling our food supply, five companies providing our health care. Now, we have a lot of lawyers in Congress, probably too many, actually, with all due respect. Uh, we, we need more people who have met a payroll. Most folks have never met a payroll. I've met a payroll for over 20 years. So I'd like to ask Ms. Harned, that's the correct way to pronounce that, I hope. Uh, you're with the NFIB. What, what, what type of impact does this have on uh, small businesses, all the, all the regulations? Right. So we've done um, numerous surveys on this because regulations have been a perennial problem for small business owners. And honestly, it's always a top three problem, second only or third only <laughs> to taxes and health insurance. Um, regardless of if it's good or bad as far as how many are coming out of the regulatory state, complying regu with regulations is a problem for small business owners because 72% of those employers that have 10 or fewer employees are the regulatory compliance officer. They're reading the rule. They're trying to figure out how to comply with it. What are they not doing? They're not managing their business. They're not growing it. They're not managing staff. They're not trying to get new customers. And that, um, we think, is... Uh, not helpful for the economy, and honestly, that is uh, very much, I think, why you will see, especially in these heavily regulated areas, more consolidation. Two trillion dollars, somebody mentioned uh, earlier, it costs the economy every year. In small businesses, could they pay their employees more? Could they offer better health care to their employees if they weren't paying all these costs for, I'm not, we, we don't want no regulations, okay? We just want a happy medium, happy balance. If they had less regulations, Absolutely. Could they help their employees out more? All of the research that's been done on this has shown that the disproportionate burden is real cost. I think one study recently, $10,000 per employee for small employers to comply with regulation. When you consider the fact that our members at NFIB, you know, on average net fifty to $75,000 a year, they're not counting their gold coins. This is real dollars that they can't afford to spend. Counting their bitcoins or their gold coins? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. No, same question to you. I think um, this is a basic problem. I think, you know, what makes our country great is that it's a free market democracy, and that starts with the free market and all the benefits it can deliver in terms of wealth creation, economic security, jobs, and all the other benefits. Certainly, if there's market failures, those should be addressed, things like, you know, emissions, uh, environmental health and safety standards that I know I'm at, uh, feel so strongly about. Those are all important issues that should be addressed by a regulatory system. But we ought to do it in a rational way. I think there should be a congressional requirement that all regulations should do more good than harm. Mr. Is it Narang? 20,000, not that we're counting, 20,642 new regulations in the Obama administration. How much is enough? How much is enough? How, how much do you think businesses can handle before we don't have any businesses? 
Uh, at Public Citizen, I've met many uh, individuals that have lost loved ones due to a lack of uh, effective, strong regulations, mm -hmm. uh, that have had children, uh, you know, uh, have asthma due to being cited close to um, polluting sources. Uh, it's very important to hear from all voices in this debate. And so it's critical to hear from small business owners and small business representatives. But I think it's just as critical to hear from uh, the folks, the average Americans that benefit from regulations on a daily basis. We all benefit from regulations on a daily Can basis. Can we keep so, adding 20,000 regulations every every two terms or two administrations? I, I Can we keep doing stories, that? I have many stories to share uh, where there was a, a lack of adequate and effective regulation. Is that and the I, exception and, or the rule? Oh, I don't think, I think it's, it's the exception. exception. I don't, don't I, think so? Well, l let me say this. As much as it is uh, my honor and pleasure to testify here today, I really would encourage this committee to, to hear from uh, folks we talk to at Public Citizen and other organizations that work with us that benefit from regulations and that have uh, been uh, dramatically harmed by a lack of uh, adequate and strong uh, re regulations. I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman, that I do not have. General from Iowa yields back. Gentleman from Alabama is recognized.